Forward to Robert E. Lee, The Soldier, by Sir Frederick Maurice. Sir Frederick Maurice was a Britisher of unusual pedigree and heritage. His father was a major general in the service of the Raj of India, and his grandfather was a cleric and theologian of note. Born in 1871, he followed his father through the ranks of the Imperial Army, served in the Boer War, and was made Major General, knighted by King George V, and made Director of Military Operations during the Great War. Maurice publicly disputed the strength of the British infantry in France with Prime Minister Lloyd George and was forced to resign his commission in late 1918. Maurice demanded a court's martial, hoping for vindication through the verification of his statements with the record. Although he was denied his trial, he was vindicated through subsequent investigations and his reputation as a man of integrity and courage was enhanced. After his military career, he became a military historian of note. Maurice was a scholar of the American Civil War and a great critic of military competence and civilian command in wartime. His Lee, the soldier, was welcomed in American scholarship as the judgment of a preeminent authority on war and command. Southerners were particularly gratified in the affirmation of previous and perhaps more partial praise of Lee's abilities as a commander from a scholar outside of their own borders. Maurice develops his thoughts on Lee by starting with his family, upbringing, and military experience. He identifies the Virginian heritage of the Lees, Lee's sense of duty and ties to place, and Lee's military career. Finally, he offers exposition and argument concerning Lee's great choice of loyalty and his abilities as the executive of the Army of Northern Virginia. Lee was a man loyal to his home, his family, and his community over all of the political tumults of his day, and his priorities were immediately respected even by his enemies. Charles Francis Adams, Jr., in his various and public tributes to Lee after the war, spoke for the sentiments of most when he claimed, under the circumstances, he would have had the same loyalties as Lee. Lee drew a strict line between what he would submit to and what he would resist, and his organic connections between places and people were sacred and unbreakable bonds. His own political doubts about the wisdom of Virginia's course, his liberal views and wishes concerning slavery, and his lifelong ties to the U.S. Army never shook his essential and unchosen ties. Lee was a man of responsibility. In the war, there were many who chose to blame others for calamities, none so notable as Lincoln himself, who blamed God Almighty for the war in his second inaugural address. Lee, in contrast, was a man who proclaimed his responsibility in the most painful of circumstances, both after Pickett's charge and at Appomattox. Maurice notes that this signal and Homeric aspect of leadership much endeared Lee to his men and their descendants, proving a timeless quality of aristocracy. Maurice further notes that Lee regularly showed an instinct to lead that exposed his person to danger, another antique and traditional trait of a true captain who scorns safety when ordering others into danger. Maurice notes Lee's virtues in assessing his lieutenants. He was a judge of character and respected the capacity of his subordinates, famously giving certain officers more latitude, perhaps, than they deserved when it came to his plans. Yet his cooperative tendency permitted other geniuses, like Jackson, to flourish. In final analysis, Lee was never beaten through maneuver or in campaign but through overwhelming resources and in surrender with his army an intact force, yet hopeless. Maurice measures Lee among the great captains of the West and finds him a champion, a leader of resources, cunning judgment, and courage. It is partly due to the verdict of Maurice that the campaigns of the American Civil War continue to be studied in the military academies of the world, 
for they are the symphonies and ballets of the ancient art of war, and Lee is one of our greatest composers of battle. George Bagby, Louisiana, spring of 2024.